Hello again. This is part four of explanation of distortion in guitar amplifiers and the simulation on the ADAU 1452 board and programmed in Sigma Studio. In part one, two, and three, I described you um, symmetrical, asymmetrical clipping. I described um, hard clipping or soft clipping. And in part three, I explained the um, simulation of crossover distortion, which occurs in power amplifiers of pentode amplifier from guitar amplifiers. Now, um, that was in part three, um, that we have the interaction of um, uh, analog components with nonlinear devices. And in this part, part four, I explain you something more of the interaction of um, a capacitor, resistor, and a valve. In, I show you the Vox amplifier circuit. You can see the the circuit here. We have preamp, valve. We have um, output capacitor. Then goes to the volume part. Then we goes to a, again to a capacitor, which decouples this circuit here of the splitter stage, which then enables us to drive the power amp with the four pentodes. Okay, last time we had the crossover distortion, which uh, had the reason in um, the resistor of the cathode here, in the cathode um, capacitor there, and this capacitor charges up a bit with a signal, and that changes the bias. Uh, so we have um, crossover distortions. Now, again, we have a part here, which is the coupling capacitor C30 here, and that um, resistance circuit here of R59 and R61 of this first valve V5. The capacitor um, charges up with heavy signal uh, coming from the guitar or pulses and um, when that capacitor charges up it changes the, the bias for this valve and that moves the whole thing upwards to a, to a region where we get um, grid current. Grid current occurs um, when uh, the voltage um, exceeds a certain level and then it acts like a diode. A diode is um, resistive in one direction and not resistive or very, very high ohm in the other direction. Okay? And when this is, um, and you see this as a diode here in the input stage, um, the capacitor with this resistance network and the diode char characteristic of the grid current um, gives us something completely new. It's a high pass, and the high pass is um, different in the corner frequency, um, dependent on if the signal is positive or negative. If it's more positive, we have the grid current, which reduces the resistance of this um, network here, in conjunction with this capacitor, and that gives us a, a corner frequency. And if um, the the grid current is not there because we have um, the negative signal, then um, we have the normal corner frequency, which is calculated with this two resistance and the capacitor. Furthermore, we have a nonlinear behavior in the positive region where the grid current occurs because the higher the signal is here, the more current flows into the grid and the, the more the corner frequency changes. So this is a, a very complex thing here which has um, influence of the next power amplifier and, and the whole distortion signal coming out of here at the transformer. 
in this uh, simulation environment, which is um, Simulink in MATLAB, um, we have uh, the whole circuit simulated and the, the valves are um, modeled by special um, modeling technique. I come to this um, in the next part of my explanation, how that is done. These valves are not um, usual equations which de describes the current of um, cathode and grid. It's real measured um, tubes um, where I got uh, the whole um, matrix uh, measured by an SMU. It's a source measure unit which measures uh, current voltage, current and voltage at the same time. But I'll come to this later, okay? <laughs> so the th this is here the high pass which behaves nonlinear. And I show you how. Um, we have some signals here um, which I simulated. And then we have this this signal here. You can see a bit bigger here. This signal is at the point here, DC4, which measures the point here after the capacitor. So this is the crucial point. And I'm going to show you what happens there. We see if I zoom here in with the uh, y-axis, okay, you can see that the DC voltage changes because of the burst signal and um, this is not the usual behavior of a, a high pass. This is due to the fact that we have positive grid current and that um, results in a special behavior which you see here. This has the influence of the power stage you can hear you can see the here and you can also see that that the whole bias is moving and shifting the whole signal so look at we have so we get different um, signal behavior period by period. Furthermore we have the um, the fact that um, uh, I've put in some white noise on it here to show you how um, we get the so-called blocking distortion. The blocking distortion um, is described on further internet sides of tube and valve amplifiers and um, this is a uh, reason uh, because of this nonlinear behavior of the high pass, which moves the bias of the splitter stage. And because the bias changes, the whole amplifier comes to a region where this, um, the nonlinear um, driving point is in a in a region where where the signal is um, very asymmetrical and distorted and that changes with time I'm going to show you um, how that sounds and how that measures here's a um, analyzing software which is um, Spectralab and we have the, the MATLAB um, calculation here. So I can show you that this is both the same. We have the Vox IC30 um, circuit simulation output of the transformer here. And this is the uh, model. Um, and the model is the, the nonlinear um, device chain of um, in Sigma Studio done here with nonlinear one, two, and three, and a fourth one here, all decoupled with high passes, a high pass here, and another high pass there. And we have the crossover distortion done here. Plus we have now new here, the nonlinear high pass. The nonlinear high pass um, 
<coughs> is here demonstrated with um, with some faders. Um, the first fader of corner frequency one is set at four hertz, and the second fader is set up to seven hertz. And I'm going to show you how that measures. Okay. So you see the signal is triggered, and you hear the white noise. And maybe you listen that you can hear that um, the noise is lit shortly faded out. Plus, this pulse is distorted in the in the waveform. If we go over to the chain of um, nonlinear device, we have two nonlinear devices here. This is the output stage and um, a fourth stage here, which is like this. And we're, we're working now with lookup tables. And uh, you can see that there's no um, nonlinear high pass in the chain now. And when I put it in the chain with this here, you can see that it's di different. Okay. When I change the corner frequency to the same, as a 4 hertz and 4 hertz, you can see the signal is symmetrical. And if I move this second corner frequency, you can see the behavior of the nonlinear high pass. We can break it the opposite way, like that. We make it very extreme, like that. Or we go the other direction, we can also be very extreme. You see the that the amplifier is now very much hardworking. So we have that like this. Okay, this here was the signal from the simulation of the circuit you saw he from here. This is a simulation of um, the whole model with four nonlinear non -linear devices and crossover distortion and nonlinear high pass. And here you see the signal where I can change some parameters. Okay, again, the same fre corner frequency and different corner frequencies of the nonlinear high pass. Now let's listen to that. Okay, because that proves us that there's something happening. Okay, again with the speaker simulation and again with um, um, a special booster for the guitar. Switch over to the that I make the high pass the same as a four hertz and four hertz. Now different. Now you hear the transient behavior is different. No, it farts out. And the more distortion you have, I put more level inside now, increase the level of the guitar, the more the effect we get. Can you hear? The noise fades away. Again, if it's the same, it's not not doing that. Now again, it does it. Now, some amplifiers do it more, some amplifiers do it less. 
Um, it depends what you want. But the thing is, this is the usual behavior of analog electronic components in conjunction with nonlinear devices like transistors or field effect transistors or uh, valves. Uh, that there's no, and now we have a different. I think that gives the amplifier a bit more natural liveness. It's sounding very analog. like a stump box. <laughs> and now we go to a real hard working valve amplifier. Okay, now again we go to the very, very simple um, topology, which is just a high pass, uh, some gain here, it's exactly the same gain as the top um, topology here, and uh, just two nonlinear devices with no high pass, a nonlinear high pass, and no crossover distortion. It sounds like that. not bad but it sounds like a stamp box for me and now again back to the real amp don't want it too much reducing a little bit so that's it hope you like it analog circuits thank you for watching me bye bye